Welcome to Founders Metropolitan Community Church. We are so glad that you are here to worship with us today. Along with our Sunday worship, Founders MCC offers a rich assortment of personal and spiritual enrichment classes, a variety of activities, and a number of support groups to help us grow along the way. Don't forget to visit the information and welcome table in the courtyard today or pick up one of the Connections flyers to find out more. Please don't miss out on the information and announcements in your bulletin, which will make your connection with Founders more meaningful. Check out our website, mccla.org. And find us also on Facebook. And join us in making Founders MCC your one-stop spiritual port. This is your first Sunday at Founders You Community. are our guest. We would like to extend an especially warm welcome. After today's worship service, please join us for refreshments in the courtyard. Visit the Welcome and Information Center. And meet some new friends. We'd love to answer your questions, give you a tour of the building, or serve you a cup of coffee. Or a cup of tea. In just a few moments, the ushers will pass out our welcome tablet. We want everyone to sign in today and let us know how we can best serve you. If you're joining us online, we want to hear from you as well. Look for the check-in information on the homepage of our website. And let us know that you're joining us. Founders MCC is a place of diverse and wealth, a place of healing and acceptance, a place of deep spirituality and transformation, a place of joy and love. Welcome to Founders Metro Community Church, Los Angeles. Join with me in the words of the call to worship, a leader and people response. In the laughter of children, we hear the voice of the way and find our way home. In the lap of a parent, God's compassion cradles us in the still waters of love. The shepherd of our lives leads us through that door into life forever. We are refreshed with living waters, anointing us, restoring us to follow Jesus all our days. The Holy Spirit keeper of truth is the light which guides us through every shadowed moment. The breath of life stirs all our worries and fears as we are led to that peaceful place of God's heart. So rise then in body and spirit as we sing our opening hymn, Blessed Assurance, Jesus is Mine.
Indeed, almighty and loving God, in this place we come to praise your Savior, our Savior, all the day long. And as we begin this day with our 9 o'clock service and then move to our 11 and to our 1.30 service and this evening to our second Sunday creative arts service at 8 o'clock, we are mindful that we are called to praise our Savior all the day long. So may the Holy One now bless us as we come into this place, as we allow that Spirit to anoint us afresh and anew, and to bring us into that consciousness of worship this morning. May the presence of the living Christ therefore shine through us and through all that we do this day and every day. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Now, before you're seated this morning, uh, last Sunday I said that we were getting a little holier. Um, I want you to look up and see just how much holier we are becoming. Uh, we have uh, now all of the holes in the ceiling ready for our new air conditioning units that will be hopefully in place in the next few weeks or so. And not only are we having air conditioning in our church uh, sanctuary, but throughout the building, uh, there is not one piece of the ceiling in this building that does not have a hole in it. Um, and uh, we are grateful for the sun, but we'll be even more grateful for the air of the air conditioning units. So uh, thank God this morning. Good morning, and I'll invite you to be seated. Uh, there, as you know, there are so many other things happening in our church building. Uh, we are having the elevators put in, and uh, the ramp is disappearing, and the new lift to the uh, uh, physical uh, challenged uh, ex entrance at the side of the building, uh, as well as a fully furnished uh, kitchen and theater and uh, new fellowship rooms downstairs. So many things are happening, and that is so encouraging of what we are able to do together um, as a church body. And as we've said every Sunday, and we'll continue to say this, this isn't just for the benefit of our local community, uh, but it's for the benefit of the wider community in which we serve. Um, and we are so excited about what that brings to us as a potential, as a church and a congregation. So thank you, thank you for your faithfulness during our dust, uh, but also thank you to the contractors who just do a splendid job in cleaning up at the end of a week. You would not believe what this sanctuary looks like during the week with scaffolding all over the place uh, and people crawling about on the ceiling and doing all sorts of wonderful things, and they are just doing an incredible job in making sure that our house is kept as clean as possible. Would you give them a round of applause this morning? I want to welcome you to worship as we gather in this sanctuary and in this safe space this morning. We are so grateful for the presence of a living God that continues to renew us and refresh us. And as I look around this morning, we are all home folks. We've all been here, I believe, almost. There is at least one visitor amongst us, so I want to extend a very special welcome. If you're worshiping with us for the very first time, I wonder if you would just indulge my spirit, if you would just raise your hand, keep it up for a moment so that we can welcome you this morning. Uh, we're glad that we are all here this morning. Let's welcome one another. Another. And for those of you who are joining us online this morning, we want to welcome you especially. We are so glad that you have decided to join with us as well today. And we are also excited to be able to extend not only our greetings this morning, but also to welcome you and to invite you to partner with us as a church and as a local community. Know that you are a part of us as much as we hope to be a part of you. So if there's anything that we can do for you or for any single person who's joined us in our sanctuary this morning around pastoral care or about reaching out, please do let us know so that we can do our very best to minister one with the other this morning. We are so glad that you are with us today. Please remember as the ushers are passing out the welcome tablets to sign in for us this morning, uh, let us know that you are present. I'm giving the ushers the run around this morning because they were ready to do something else uh, for me. Uh, but we're going to we'll go to the welcome tablets first, so please do sign in for us. Uh, let us know that you have been present. Um, also let us know if there's anything that you would need from your staff, and uh, we'll make sure that we do follow up with you in the not-too-distant future. Um, and it really is important that you sign in for us today. A couple of weeks ago, the clerk of the board stood up and uh, reminded you that we are uh, encouraging you to update your record with the church. Uh, a number of us, uh, especially here in Los Angeles, um, either move locations or change our email addresses or change our phone numbers or go to a different cell phone carrier, uh, do all sorts of things, which means that we are not able to contact you, especially when you ask us to. 
Um, so uh, today, uh, we are asking you not only to sign in, but also to update your record. Please just uh, fill in the full name and address so that uh, it really is clear for us, and any updated information that we, you know that we might not have. Um, there are some forms available also at the welcome table, and if you fill in those forms, uh, they'll be going into a raffle. And uh, the raffle will be drawn in a week or so. Um, and the lucky winner, uh, the person who actually updates their record, even if you think we have the most up-to-date information, but the winner of the person who gives their updated information will get brunch with me. So, so, so when I see that only three people have updated their records so far, um, that doesn't make me feel too good. <laughs> Um, so I'm looking forward to at least a few more people uh, signing in and making sure that your records are updated this morning. Thank you so much for doing that. We also want to acknowledge that it's Mother's Day today, and we want to thank God for those who are our mothers, uh, for those who have uh, been our mothers, for those who continue to be our mothers, uh, and for those who, in the absence of a mother, offer that mothering spirit to us. There are so many ways in which we celebrate Mother's Day here in our congregation, but we do want to honor especially the mothers who are no longer uh, with us physically, but are with us spiritually this morning. So if you happen to be someone whose mom has already passed over to the other side and who has joined the cloud of witness and is peeking through one of the holes this morning, um, I wonder if you would uh, raise your hand so that we can honor those mums and we will be giving you uh, a carnation to remember them this morning. So please keep your hands up just for a few more minutes. That would be most helpful. We want to make sure that we honor our mums this morning. And for those of you who have moms in your own life, uh, or perhaps you are a mom yourself, uh, we're going to ask you now to raise your hands so that we can honor our moms this morning and the moms who are in our lives. So we'll just take a few moments just to honor those this morning. And for those of us on the dais, we can either receive ours now or we can wait till later on. <laughs> Mother's Day in the United Kingdom is on March the 30th, uh, not uh, today, and so my mom always gets two Mother's Days. She doesn't get two from me because I always forget on March the 30th. <laughs> But she gets one from all of my other siblings, and then hopefully she'll get one from me later on today. Uh, so uh, we want to honor. Let's honor all of our mums this morning in one way or another. Friends, I do have two other announcements for you this morning. Uh, some of you will know Jody, um, a member of our congregation, a young man who grew up in this church with his two moms many, many years ago and has been a faithful member of our congregation. Some of you may know or may have heard that he had a very bad uh, motorcycle accident just a couple of weeks ago and has been in ICU ever since. I'm grateful to the staff and to the men members and ministers of the mental health team and the, uh, uh, the uh, pastoral, lay pastoral assistants um, who have been extremely faithful and have been by his bedside um, every day, uh, present with him and with his girlfriend um, and with so many friends who have just journeyed with him. Um, he recently had surgery to fuse some of his uh, spinal uh, discs, and um, the hope is that there'll be some level of recovery, although we don't know to what extent that will be. Um, and so as a word of encouragement this morning, we're inviting you just to give a prayer or to say something to him. Even if you don't know him in the courtyard, there are some uh, butcher paper um, on the windows of uh, the room. And we're inviting you just to sign a little message of encouragement uh, that we're then going to deliver to him and to his girlfriend at the hospital. His mom's coming into town this week, and so uh, we want to let her know uh, that we are praying for them. Reverend Dr. Elder Dr. Nancy Wilson um, is 
the godmother of Jody, um, and so at some point she'll be flying in also just to be with him. Um, and we are just so grateful to the prayerful support that you have offered to him. So even if you don't know him, let's go to the courtyard and let him know that people, even if they are strangers, um, and let's not do it now. Uh, we can do it after worship this morning, uh, but let him know that we are praying for him today. And I'm just going to ask Reverend Dr. Pat Langlois if she would give us an announcement with regard to pride this year. Celebrating pride. Uh, and uh, this year, there we go. Uh, th this year, the um, uh, theme of pride from uh, CSW is putting the T first. In other words, remembering and honoring and, and lifting up our trans uh, folks amongst us. And so there's, we, what we did is all of the different trans words and besides transgender, there is a lot of them. And we thought, okay, well, how do we incorporate that in this church who loves and honors our trans uh, folks amongst us? And we realized MCC is about transformation. So if you take a look uh, up at the screen, uh, Pam Apostolo from our 11 o'clock service and from the Young Professionals, who is a graphic designer herself, designed this, and it's just fabulous. If you take a look, there on the top and the bottom is transformation. That for some of us, we come into the world with a, a male or female body on the outside, and realize that we are male or the, the other on the inside. And so some of us transform our bodies. Some of us come into the world thinking that we're heterosexual and vanilla and end up finding that we're a queer leather person. So, you know, there are a number of transformations that you see in this. This is going to be our logo, and if we could go to the next slide, it will be our T-shirt as well. On the front, of course, is the logo, and on the back is our church logo, again, with Scan Me on it. Um, the, you know, we have to be in the 21st century. So we do have, um, uh, be, we'll be beginning to take orders, and there's also sign-up sheets right by the information table. So if you'd like to pre-order your T-shirt, so you're guaranteed the size that you would like. Um, please do so after service. We take, of course, cash, check, and even credit card. So we're a full-service church into transformation. Amen? Amen. Thank you. And finally, sisters and brothers, if you would like to have brunch with the pastor, uh, you can also sign up at the welcome table uh, this morning. Please don't make me go there all on my own. <laughs> God is good, and all the time. Let's turn to one another now, offer a sign of peace, a sign of welcome, and my apologies for taking so long on our announcements. Through 47, taken from the English Standard Version. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and the fellowship to the breaking of the bread and the prayers. And awe came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were being done through the apostles. And all who believed were together and had all things in common. And they were selling their possessions and belongings and distributing the proceeds to all as any had need. And day by day, attending the temple together and breaking bread in their homes, they received the food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having favor with all the people. And God added to their number day by day those who were being saved. Hear what the Spirit says today. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Amen. Amen.
and invite you to be seated. And before I begin preaching this morning, and I, I know I apologize for taking so long in our announcements today, we don't usually take that long, uh, but um, wanted to also let you know that in June, uh, we'll be starting a new sermon series uh, and study for the whole of Pride Month um, entitled Faith, Sex, God, and Culture, Meeting at the Intersections. So I uh, just want to put that out there. Uh, please invite your friends. Anything that has sex in it should be an attraction. Uh, so um, we want to uh, allow people to come and to enjoy this series uh, and to hear from us, a theological progressive community, uh, where will the intersections of spirituality and faith connect um, as this church community. So I wanted to let you know about that in June. And now let's pray together. Amazing and gracious and wonderful God, you who continue to show up in us and through us, and you who are still in the world as we manifest you in our lives, bless us therefore as we continue on our journey and our path in discovering you and knowing you more clearly, more dearly, day by day. Encourage us, O God, through our faithfulness to be those disciples, the hands, the feet, the heart, the mouth, the embodiment of Christ in this world. And use this worship service and this word and our music and our prayers and our communion and all that is said and done here to remind us that you are still speaking through us. And now, loving and gracious one, I pray that you would open our hearts and minds, touch my lips of clay, mold them into the words that need to be spoken this day, and may the words that come from my mouth and the meditations on each and every one of our hearts, may they be ever acceptable to you. In the name of Jesus, the risen Christ, in whom we have our being. Amen. Amen. The scripture reading this morning came from the Acts of the Apostles, and it's the very first book that follows the four Gospels in the beginnings of the New Testament. And I don't believe that the Acts of the Apostles is put there by accident. Um, I believe that the Acts of the Apostles is put there by, by virtue of reminding us of what happened after the resurrection of Jesus. What happened to those early disciples? What happened to those peoples? We've been journeying, especially in our post-resurrection experience of, of Jesus on the road to Emmaus and Jesus on the road that encouraged those disciples as he reappeared to them over and over again. But there was a moment and we're going to be sharing that in just a few weeks. But there was a moment when Jesus finally ascended into heaven and left this earth physically. And then the disciples were on their own. The disciples were left to work out what it was that Jesus was teaching, what Jesus had taught them, and how they could exemplify that through their own lives and in their own being. And we, as the Christians of this 2014th year, are those who are inheritors in many ways of what those apostles taught us. We're the inheritors of what those early disciples did that radically changed their experience of who God is. Not just through the living experience of Jesus walking amongst them, but what that impact had when Jesus could no longer be seen physically on this earth. And just in a few weeks, we're going to be celebrating Ascension, and then we'll celebrate Pentecost. But the Acts of the Apostles is a very clear mandate, if you will, of what those disciples should be doing, what they are called to do, what that early church invested themselves in doing in order to be truly the disciples of Jesus. It was this that perhaps set them aside from that may, may or may not have been happening for the Jewish nation at that period in their history. It were these acts that reminded the people that even though Jesus was not physically present, his spirit remained on this earth. And it's that same spirit that we call upon even on this Sunday to move amongst us. It's that same spirit that we call upon even on this Sunday to transform us and to call us into the embodiment of Christ in this world. What was that then that, that separated them out? Or what was it that they received from their heritage that enabled them to be the disciples of Jesus? 
Well, remembering that many of these early folks were the Jewish converts to Christianity, and I don't even like that terminology, Jewish converts, because they didn't, re- didn't stop being Jewish. They still remained in their very Jewishness. They certainly had many Gentiles who came upon them. Um, I think that when we talk about Jewish converts, that we are being a little bit anti-Semitic um, in re- saying that somehow our religion is better than somebody else's religion. Uh, But many of these were people who had come to understand through their Jewish heritage that this Jesus was the Messiah, and that this Messiah was the one that they had been waiting for and that was now available not just to the Jewish folks, but was available to all who would come and follow in the footsteps of Jesus. And so we have this group of disciples, many of which, as I say, came out of those early synagogues, and many of which would have known the very law, the very pinnacle of the law of Jewish tradition, and that was the law of hospitality. Their law of hospitality was perhaps the number one law that guided the Jewish nation throughout all of its history. That notion that hospitality should be given one to the other, and that we as a people had a responsibility to care for one another, to anoint one another. In fact, in the early histories of Jesus, you may have heard of how Jesus was welcomed into households, and immediately they would anoint their heads with oil and their feet with the most expensive perfume. It wasn't just a story of the woman who knelt before Jesus. This was something that was offered to each stranger that came amongst them. It was their responsibility. It was their corporate responsibility. It was their individual responsibility to offer such hospitality, to bring people in, to welcome the stranger, and to make them feel like they are the most important person around. It was the law of hospitality, and they brought that law through the ancient and through the early Christian folks into the early Christian church to the Acts of the Apostles. And we hear this morning how those early disciples had something to teach those Gentiles that were coming amongst them, that this rule, this law of hospitality was the one thing that would hallmark this early church of Jew and Gentile alike coming together to acknowledge the presence of God in their lives. Sharing well with others. It's Mother's Day, and I can't help but remember and hear my, the stories of my mom running around in my own head. And I, I'm sure that you've probably heard the saying, well, does he or she play well with others? Sharing well with others was a hallmark of the early Christian church of the Acts of the Apostles. As we heard in our scripture this morning, they shared everything that they had in common. They began to sell things and sell their possessions so that they had things to give to those who were less fortunate than themselves. And they devoted themselves to prayer and to being in the temple and to anointing one another and loving one another in such a way that even coming into their company, you could not help but know that there was something different about this group of people. That this was a group of people who shared well with others, and they were able to bless one another abundantly and graciously in so many different and transforming ways. Just being with them, it says that they added to their number day by day those who were knowing the saving grace of Jesus. I have to ask ourselves in our own community and in the communities in which we have found ourselves, is that really, is that still a hallmark of the church? Is that still a hallmark of this community that we are prepared to share well with others? Or have we been absorbed by a culture that demands us to think of me, me, me? As you know, I'm a a singer. Well, at least I like to think I'm a singer. And sometimes in our warm-up experiences, we have the me, 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 me. You see, it's enforced in every piece of our culture. (laughs) Thinking about ourselves and only ourselves. So many ways in which our governments and our systems and our structures remind us, take care of you because no one else is going to take care of you yourself. Think of the many ways in which this is reinforced in in so many different ways. Speak up. Look after yourself. Never think of others. Indeed, if you think of others, perhaps you're being a little bit naive about what you are going to be like when you are in your older age. 
save now because you might not have enough when you are late, late in older life. Now, there are some truths to all of those things. Don't, uh, don't get me wrong. I'm, I'm not suggesting this morning that we should just, uh, you know, give all your money to the church, or perhaps I am. I'm not necessarily uh, perhaps uh, saying that we shouldn't think about our future and about, about where we are and how we c- care for, for ourselves, but there has to be some balance for us as the people of faith. There has to be some balance about how we as a, as a people stand out from the crowd, how we as a people remind ourselves of those early experiences of those disciples and that we are called to this morning to share well with others to share from our resources, to share from who we are. It's one of the reasons why I believe so passionately in tithing. And this is not a tithing sermon, so don't all get up and run away. But the reality is that one of the reasons why I so believe in tithing, because I believe that the tithe that we bring to the church and that we bring to the organizations that we are a part of, and I'm not just talking about our finances, I'm talking about our time and our talent and our treasure, that the tithe that we bring is the great equalizer of those, whether we are wealthy beyond all measure or we have but just the widow's might to offer, that it truly is that leveler, that if we were all truly to give 10% of our time and our talent and our treasure, there would be more than enough to share and well with others into the broader community in which we live. I am so grateful for the many of you that pledge and tithe and give of your finances, but I'm also so grateful for this morning for those of you who give of your time and of your talent, for those who will go and sit with Jody hour after hour, for for those who will design wonderful T-shirts of transformation that we'll be very proud to wear on Gay Pride Sunday, acknowledging our own transformations. I'm so grateful for the many who offer their talent on the soundboard or in the tech room. So many of uh, those who offer their expertise, as many of you are offering right now in our lower level as the, the construction company plans out and we get to put in the very things that need to be given and you offer that so freely to this church. Sharing well with others. It is that which made them stand out from the crowd. It was that which enabled them to truly understand that this Jesus that they spoke of was not just a Jesus that needed to be here physically in order for them to find transformation in their lives. That it was the spirit of a living God that compelled them. It was the spirit of a living God that drove them. It was a spirit of the living God that called them over and over and over again to make sacrifice so that they would be a people who would share well with others, play well with others. The church is called to be countercultural. And in a culture where we continue to be me, 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 it's all about me. Well, maybe. It's all <laughs> about me. In a world where we continue to hear that echoing down through the generations, The church must wake up one more time and remind itself that we have been called to be more than me. We've been called to be us. We've been called to be community. And we've been called to be a place where we share well with others. I pray that when folks enter into our church Sunday by Sunday, those who are here with the first time, those of us who have been here for a decade and much, much longer, that we might remind ourselves that our primary calling of hospitality is to share well with others, to share our time, our talent, and our treasure, and to make this world a much more fair and equal and just place. And in those actions, we too will be able to echo the acts of the apostles Not just those who lived and breathed more than 2,000 years ago, but those who live and breathe in this place this morning. The apostles, followers of Jesus. May we be blessed as we continue to share well with others all that we are. And let us not get into our own sandbox 
and protect only what has been given to us. God bless you this morning. Let us pray. Almighty and loving one, and thank you for the example of the apostles who really took that teaching of Jesus of hospitality, of being fair, of being equal, of sharing the grace and the love that was afforded to them with others. Help us this morning as we think about our own lives and about our own culture and how we can be countercultural and perhaps even mix up our lives this morning so that we can continue to be the people who share well with others. And may it be a hallmark of this church in our renovations, in our programs, in our ministries, in our one-on-one interactions. May we always be a people who share well with others. Now, Almighty God, I pray that you would take the words that have come from my mouth, not allow them to return to you without blessing us, gracing us and challenging us to take that next step in our spiritual maturity and our spiritual development to move beyond self from me to us. Amen. With Mother's Day comes a wide variety of emotions for each of us. And as it being Mental Health Awareness Month, I want to encourage all of us to feel those feelings wherever we are in relationship to our mothers on our journey. And I've selected a few poems um, for each of us where we are. There are times when only a mother's love can understand our tears, can soothe our disappoints, and calm all of our fears. There are times when only a mother's love can share the joy we feel, when something we've dreamed about quite suddenly is real. There are times when only a mother's faith can help us on life's way and inspire in us the confidence we need from day to day. For a mother's heart and a mother's faith and a mother's steadfast love were fashioned by the angels and sent from God above. And on behalf of everyone who has lost their mother, may this Mother's Day poem lift your heart and touch your spirit. If roses grow in heaven, Lord, please pick a bunch for me. Place them in my mother's arms and tell her they're from me. Tell her I love her and miss her, and when she turns to smile, place a kiss upon her cheek and hold her for a while. Because remembering her is easy. I do it every day. But there's an ache within my heart that will never 
go away. And so it is on Mother's Day that for those of you online, well, first of all, let me ask a question. Let's be vulnerable here for a moment. How many of you on this Mother's Day have some pain in your heart or a little bit of sadness? That's quite a bit. I ask you that for that healing and that pain to turn to God and to ask God, God's love and God's grace to be with you today and to help you heal that pain. Thank you. Yeah. 
Gracious and loving God, we thank you for being the Redeemer. And I ask that you grace your love and healing power on some of these hearts today that may have grief and pain and sorrow. And I ask that you transform that into love, hope, and joy. And let us remember that there are many, many mothers out there today that are suffering from various forms of mental illness, including depression, anxiety, suicidality, bipolarism. And I ask that you will come to them and lead them to a life full of healing, hope, and grace. And I ask for all of this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. come to this table of both and, I ask that we join our hearts and our minds and our souls in a moment of prayer. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. We are called to share, and yet so many are in want, gracious God, in want and in desperate need. We think of those refugees in the Sudan and Somalia and Syria without food and water, without the necessities of life, and our hearts ache with a sense of helplessness. And yet ultimately, even as we fall to our knees, we pray in faith. All shall be well and all shall be well and all manner of things shall be well. The Lord is my shepherd who leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. We pray for our earth, creator God, for your earth. Even as so many continue to deny climate change, the polar ice continues to melt, sea levels rise and coastal areas on every continent are threatened. Forgive our collusion in the destruction and fill us with the determination to be part of the solution. And so we pray in humility. All shall be well, and all shall be well, and all manner of thing shall be well. The Lord is my shepherd. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for you are with me. We pray for the hearts and lives of the 276 kidnapped Nigerian girls and those that we do not know of and their confused and grieving families who are walking through that dark valley loving God, hoping from the depths of our aching souls that they will be restored to their families, to their lives. And so we pray in hope all shall be well, all shall be well, and all manner of things shall be well. The Lord is my shepherd. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my perceived enemies. Mm -hmm. Surrounded with your protection, holy God, the fast food workers in 150 of the United States who in 33 countries throughout the world will be staging a global protest on Thursday asking for a living wage and the right to unionize without fear of retaliation, asking only to be treated with justice and respect. And so we pray in trust. All shall be well, all shall be well, and all manner of thing shall be well. The Lord is my shepherd. You anoint my head with all and my cup overflows. We lift up before you this day, Mother and God all mothers of all genders, and all those who nurture and lovingly care for us. May we be inspired 
to so care for others in your name, giving of ourselves in ways both great and small, that others might see and know your love through us. And so we pray in your motherly love. We shall be well, and all shall be well, and all manner of things shall be well. Let it be so, loving God, let it be so, today and every day, even as we pray as our brother Jesus did when he gave us his prayer. Day by day, God would lead us to the places of hope and healing, while moment by moment we continue to follow sin down all the wrong paths. In our own silence, we are called to draw near to you, to the one who would restore us to wholeness. So friends, I invite us to keep a moment of prayer, silent prayer, as we go to God this time. Together, let us pray. Forgive us our goodness and mercy. May our hearts overflow with hope for others as you anoint us with healing oil. May we share from our abundance with all who hunger for life. May we follow Jesus Christ to the places of service and life with you forever. My friends, our comforter leads us to that place where God's table is spread with forgiveness and overflowing with grace. Here we are called to life and to love. We will live as God's people, forgiven to serve, blessed to share, loved so we might care. Thanks be to God. Amen. 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 The great prayer of thanksgiving. The God of grace is with you. And also with you. God calls us to open our hearts to others. For they are filled to overflowing with grace. Every day, let us rejoice in the restorer of our lives. We sing glad songs to the one who leads us. Therefore, with those who walk your paths, with those who long to find their way, we offer glad and generous hearts to you as we sing.
As we seek to devote ourselves to following Jesus, we sing of that mystery known as faith. For on the night that Jesus was to be taken from us, he gathered with his disciples, such as we are gathered today. Taking the bread from the table, he blessed it. He broke it. He said, this is my body broken for you. Please eat of it, all of you. And when you do so, remember me. Likewise, following the supper, he took from the cup, from the table, the cup that was known as the cup of Elijah. He blessed it, offering it to them and saying, this is my life essence. Drink of it. And when you do, remember me. Let us pray. God, you lead us to this table where we want for nothing, for your spirit to transform everyday foods into a sacred feast. Mm -hmm. Your bread and cup comfort us, nourishing us, so we might be together in everything with our sisters and brothers. The broken bread strengthens us to provide clean, still waters to all, to build shelter for those who sleep rough, to feed those who are hungry. Your grace overflows into us so we may offer companionship to those who wandered shadowed valleys, an open gate to those longing for a community, voices of compassion and hope to the oppressed. When we follow goodness and mercy to the end of time, we will find you coming out of the kitchen, setting dish upon dish of peace and hope on that great table prepared for all of your children. And we will join in our hearts and hands as we sing praises to you, Lord God. God in community, holy in each and every one gathered. Amen. Amen. And my friends, indeed, as Jesus set the table for all, as the spirit we heard set great table to invite everyone to, so it is here, here at, at Metropolitan Community Church. We share an open communion. We follow in the footsteps of Jesus, saying everyone is welcome. You don't need to be sanctified, you don't need to be perfect, you just need to be you. Amen. Come into the table. Just come as you are, where you are. Be servers in the front to which you, the ushers will guide you, and our tradition, as you know, is to take the elements, dip it in non-alcoholic grape juice, or you may take and dip and receive yourself and then we offer a brief blessing with you. And of course, there's always private communion to which you might go at any time to take part because we don't want any roadblocks for you to keep the feast with Christ. And if you decide to stay where you're at, feast on your own prayers that you have with God. And for our families and friends, for our mothers, for our fathers, for our brothers and sisters who are worshiping with us online, this is an opportunity for you now to be intentional about keeping this feast, a feast of love. So take what you have and, and share it. Share it with your friends, share it with yourself, but do so in a spirit of love. Friends, let's keep this feast one with the other. May the ushers guide us and may the servers and acolytes please join.
So my friends, as we prepare to leave this place this morning, may we be reminded of the God who demonstrated that great sharing with us, the sharing of a Jesus who came into the world to demonstrate that abundance of who God is. And so this morning we go into the world to remind ourselves that we've been called to share well with others from the abundance that we have, whatever that looks like for ourselves, but to share well with whoever other might be. Amen. Amen. Let's rise as we close worship in song. to God's gracious mercy and protection each and every one of us is given and the blessing of God known as creator savior and holy spirit be with us and remain with us now and evermore amen go in peace participating with us online you are an extension of this church's membership ministry our extended fellowship whether you're tuning in from los angeles london tokyo or zimbabwe wherever you are in the world we are so excited to embrace you to hear from you and to pray for you all of the people you've just seen in this broadcast not just the ministers and the choir but every person sitting on those pews we are here for you so please why don't you connect with us interact with us. We have four ways you can do that. Telephone, email, Facebook, and Twitter. And all of those links are located at the bottom of every webpage of our website at mccla.org. With your help, we can not just continue, but expand and reach a greater number of people with God's love through this ministry. Be a video angel amongst us by supporting this ministry through our donate link located just under the support menu in the upper right corner of any page of our website. Your participation is very important. And I want to invite you to write to me and let me know how I can be in prayer and praise with you. Even though you are not here in our worship center, you are still a part of MCCLA. Email me directly at revneal at mccla.org. May God bless your life. And I look forward to welcoming you back many, many times to MCCLA and our weekly live broadcast. You 